later on we'll be calling someone live and you have to be there to take the call otherwise you don't get the cash now my next guests are three young talented irish actors who have shot to fame in the popular television series merlin have a little look at this Liot. Liot. Couldn't use it. Lady Morgana. Never knew you cared. Would you welcome, please, Colin Morgan, Katie McGrath, and Owen Mackin. you all very very good excellent thanks for coming along um colin merlin is uh has become a huge success yeah. um how big would you say is it possible to quantify it or it's become huge yes oh, um i'll first i'm just going to apologize with my voice I'm, I'm, I'm just recovering from a bit of sickness from the end of shooting which we wrapped on wednesday is it, there, so, um, is it the rap party or the sickness uh, oh it's the sickness rap party. Yeah. 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 you're not going to bed at four yeah. o'clock yeah. no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> that's what friends are for exactly yeah. right in the open um no it's huge it's, it's become massive it's it's in 180 different countries all over the world it's yeah. it's become you know you go to i was in new york and I got recognised up at the Empire State Building, you know, up at the top of there. The kid was like, "You're Merlin." I was like, "Yeah." You're getting that at the top of the Empire State <laughs> yeah, Building. Yeah, it's crazy. So, um, but does, yeah. it, does it travel beyond America? Then Britain is it all over Europe as well? Yeah, it's going. It's, it's everywhere. You know, you um, over translated into uh, lots of different languages into Japanese, Italian, French. Um, so, uh, so that's always fun to see uh, that the, the kid who, who apparently does the voice for Malcolm in the Middle in French does my voice in Merlin. So, really? um, yeah. yeah, you can't go anywhere now. Like you're, 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 you're the man. You're the wizard. So that, that's going to be a bit of a trial for you because you've, you've a very distinctive look. So kids will immediately go, "It's him." They do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a great thing that people have taken the show to their hearts as well. That people only have ever have nice things to say. So it's it's a it's a huge positive. And Katie, you, you studied Trinity, I, studied, I, I should say, at Trinity. Yeah, no, I did history. It's sort of a million miles away from what I'm doing now. How did you make that leap from student of history to Morgana? It does Ireland? seem a bit odd, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I guess I came out of Trinity and, you know, you have this idea of what it is you want to do with your life and then you go and you do it and suddenly realise it's not really what you want to do. <laughs> so what were you doing? I was working at Image magazine. Yeah. I was working there and I'm, I sort of left it. And I think my mum was a little nervous that I was doing nothing, so I asked her a very good friend to get me a job on a TV show he was working on. Yes. And he thought, you know, you worked in a fashion magazine, you know, you can work in costume. Bearing in mind, I can't thread a needle. And I'm thrown into, you know, 200 beautiful period costumes told to look after them. No idea what I was doing. So you were the, 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 the wardrobe girl? Yeah, in, lacing the girls into corsets in at 6 a.m. in the morning. Great. And it was actually the best six months of my life. It was brilliant. I met my best friend who's here, waving behind the camera there, so yes. say hello. And while I was doing it, I got asked to do the press photos for the first season, so the billboards and all the press packs. And sort of the directors and producers told me, you know, you should give it a shot. And since I was so awful at costume, I mean, maybe they said it because I was so awful. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm thinking. They were trying to find a way to get rid of you. Kind of, maybe. <laughs> and, but, and Anna came. Yeah, and then kind of... Went from there a bit. And Owen, your provenance is, is kind of strange because in the, let's say, pre-wizardry world, yeah. you were, what, a, a male model for Abercrombie uh, and Fitch? Ah, you had to do that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I did because I, any time I've gone to the shops, it's kind of intimidating. All these fellas wearing little or nothing. I don't know. Yeah. Which is always odd. Why are they, why are they advertising clothes wearing nothing? <laughs> well, a great question. What, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it makes well, let's ask Owen. Awesome. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. No, no. <laughs> I never really questioned it. I just kind of thought, oh, yeah, sure, why not? You know, I was kind of, you know, in Merlin, I kind of wear a lot of clothes, and I was kind of a bit confused by that. It must have been a strange world for it, you. It was. It was very difficult. Which is why he tries to take them off as much as possible as, in shots. As, as I as think Gawain should do this shot topless. Yes. So is that an on-air problem or an off-air problem? A little column A, a little, little column B. A little bit of <laughs> it just makes things easier, I find. So how did, how did you go? I mean, is it a natural progression? Did you always want to go modeling? You know, um, no, actually, I, I got into it in a, in a weird way. Uh, I started modelling, then out of, I started doing acting in college and a bit of modelling and stuff, and then I got brought to New York to model for Abercrombie. And when I was there, um, Bruce, 
said, you should be an actor. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, okay, you say that to all the boys. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So he sent me to meet this acting coach in New York, and I worked with her for a few months. I came back, and then I did some independent film. And I was doing psychology in college. And uh, a friend of mine, Emmett Scanlon, said, do you want to come audition? No, he was actually auditioning for studs, Paul Mercer's studs. Oh, yeah. And he said, can I buy your football boots? And I said, why? And he goes, well, I need it for an audition. And I was like, well, you can't play football. And he said, no, I can't. I said, okay, if you can have my boots if I can come. And he goes, okay, fine. So I came along and auditioned, and uh, Paul gave me the part. And then I was doing my finals in college while I was on studs for eight weeks with Ben Gleason and David Wilmot. Right. So I was writing my thesis on psychology and relationships, and then to go do a scene with Brendan, and I was like, this is, this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you followed the dream. Yeah, we we have happen. a shot of you modeling on uh, Thanks, that's, that's, that, that's, <laughs> that's very intense looking moment there for you. Uh, yeah. 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 Three I, years. Think, I think that's, that's a standard modeling shot when you look, conf they say gaze into the distance and think of something. Yes. And I think I was just confused. <laughs> yes. Speaking of gays, um, we have a cover of um, the uh, oh. uh, GT magazine, which is the, <laughs> the, uh, the Gay Times, uh, because you obviously you're, uh, oh, you know, you're a poster boy for girls, but, right. but you're sharing the love. Um, yes, of course. Now. And how's that going for you? I, I just thought it was only fair. I didn't want to kind of seem like I was um, sort of anti-gay, and I thought, you know what, I just want to kind of make it worldwide, universal. Yeah. So it was actually my idea to do it, actually. Well, good on no, you. Cause it, no, it wasn't your idea. Because uh, people have said that, that uh, Merlin has, you know, kind of strong ho homoeroticism in it. Uh, you should ask Colin about that. He's a lot of scenes himself and Bradley kind of do that, don't you? Colin, how would you like to discuss this? <laughs> Cheers, Alan. No um, problem. Pass you know, it on. Um, Pass it on. We did get asked, you know, about this lot, and I always say the same thing. You know, it's you, you, can, you can find connotations and undertones yeah, of, yeah. of anything if it's what you want to see. Yeah. And, um, so look, if it pleases everyone, what's wrong? You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, and it is across the board, and, and, the, and the, you know, everybody who watches the show gets something completely different from Hey, it. listen, you got something out of it. Let's have a look at the waxwork they've made of you. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. That is Colin's waxwork model. Have you, did you sit for that, or did you? I stood for it. You yeah. say, yeah. <laughs> it's good for it. Sorry, it's even better. Yeah, thanks for that. Colin, you've very big hands in that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's, it's, it's all about perspective. Great. But I love the, the, you remember the Star Wars toys we used to play with as kids? You can now have the, the Merlin. Have you seen your one? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what the best thing about that is? No. Is it fits in the Millennium Falcon. No. <laughs> I swear to God. Seriously. That's what made me so happy. How do you have a Millennium, Millennium Falcon? Falcon? Because I'm a big geek. I oh, know. Yeah. We still have them at home. No, and we have them at home. My mother has them on the dresser. So when they come in, everybody in the house has to look at the figurine. And she has it right next to the Captain Jack Sparrow one. She's like, I don't know what they do when I leave them on their own, Katie. Who knows? You and Captain Jack? <laughs> <laughs> your, your mum sounds extraordinary. She's brilliant. She, <laughs> She's so that, absolutely brilliant. That's your one, so you can have lots of fun with that, yeah. honestly. And uh, actually, there's a toy show now. Let's play toys. Yeah. Uh, this is yours. Yeah. Um, if do, only I looked like that. Actual size. Yeah. Um, and your mum puts it, where did she put it? On the dresser, when you walk into the kitchen. It's sitting yeah. there. For all, I mean, who else has a figurine? Come on. That must be pretty. It is. It's yeah. kind of at that point. I mean, we're at that point now where there's a lot of cool stuff coming out. Like, mm. we've got these and we've got Top Trumps, which apparently is very oh, cool. Yeah, top Trumps are great. I never yeah. paid with them as a kid. Oh, so we, have like, a, we have a pack backstage. Are they good? Yeah, yeah really Apparently, good. I'm quite a good card. Bit evil, though. Um, <laughs> evil is good, though. I, well, I agree. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but that's a, good, that's a good figurine. So you, you play with that with the Millennium Falcon at home in your downtime. It, yeah. it must be good for you. I'm next to Han Solo. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of like every dream's come true. All your crushes are coming out now, so that's good to know. That. <laughs> uh, what about Owen, speaking of all these action figures? By the way, we don't have an action figure. I, I don't have one yet. No. So you, I, well, I only came in, I mean, these guys have been in the show for 15 years, so I only came in last year. I'm sure action so. isn't a problem for you anyway, is it? W action? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, you're... you're no, because you, no, 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 what I'm saying is you do all your stunts, don't you? I do, indeed. Yeah. I do, yeah, I try to, when they let me, but I kind of, I, I fuck most of them up. Mess most of them. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they, they said it was like cursing the show. Sorry. <laughs> no, no I, what, what do you mean? You, you made a mess of some of them, did you? Why? Um, I think once at the very start, I almost took Bradley's head off and it came out with blood of bruised knuckles and he had to kind of take me down and go, no, no, it's like, you don't actually have to kill me. And I was like, no, no, but this is fun because you kind of feel like, you know, you get into a proper fight and then you realise, you know, it's all very choreographed. You do little bits and pieces. Yeah. But oh, I get well, it is and it isn't. I mean, if you think about it, you've got like six blokes all together, all trying to outbloke each other with swords. I mean, it's literally, you know, they think they're being very well behaved, but the amount of testosterone on that is, it, is, it, is, it, is crazy. Is yeah. Just look at the front cover of the GT. Exactly. Mean, you know, well, that, that's where I came from. Follows all around like a smile. Yeah, exactly. you know? Actually, one of the guys in the front of Rupert who plays Celine with the blonde hair, yes. we, we had this, oh, I can't even say anything, can't I, about future episodes. 
no. Well, well, you can tell kind of, we, 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 we have a fight. Right? We have a fight. And uh, we were doing it, and we both got very annoyed at each other because I felt that he was messing it up, and he thought that I was messing it up. And we ended up getting really into it and almost killed each other. For a half an hour, we were literally doing this fight, and it was very serious. Because yeah. you know when you kind of get a bit of... Yeah, it, kind just, of, it gets a bit... It spills into real dead yeah. arms. Yeah. yeah, and that was before we did the shoot. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you, you're in part, right? So this, this Colin Meany film and yourself? Yeah, yeah. And it opens today? Yeah, it's just released in, in uh, cinemas nationwide today. Okay. Um, directed by Dara Byrne. Um, fantastically directed by Dara Byrne. Um, What's it about if, you, if your throat can carry it towards yeah, a, a, little, right. a, a snapshot? Um, no, you're doing very well. Um, yeah, Colin Meany, um, uh, as everyone knows, is obviously an Irish legend. Grew, yeah, grew, yeah. grew up watching films like The Snapper and The Van, which I think everyone agrees are brilliant films. And um, this is Colin Meany, I don't think as we've ever seen him before. He's yeah. very vulnerable. He's playing a character who comes back from London um, trying to establish his life back home in Dublin. Mm. And he, um, he ends up living out of his car in a car park, parked. Yeah. Um, can't get welfare and I'm playing a um, um, uh, guy who's doing exactly the same thing but for very different reasons and was it nice for you to de-Merlinify your life for a little while and do Huge something thing. totally different like, can we take a clip of it because you're extremely yeah, good yeah. at it and I'd like to share that with our viewers I'm Carl do you talk at all? You live here, don't you? There's no shame in it. Look, I've nowhere else either except me care. Made it nice, me. Done. <laughs> That's good. You like that? That's opening today. That's in today. Right. Best of luck with it. Thank you very much. Um, and Katie, what's next? Where can we expect to see you? Are you still Merlining or have you other things going on? I have got a few other things. I um, actually did the voice for an animation that my brother's doing with Mimma Lane Pictures and I had to do it in Irish and I haven't done Irish since the junior cert so I had a person in the booth with me basically saying it and I was repeating it like a monkey so hopefully it all works out and it's called Three in the Storm. Monkey Irish. Monk well, <laughs> let's just hope it's not. It's not a pigeon Irish. It's, it's a um, and then I go to South Africa in a couple of weeks to do a miniseries with John Hurt. Right. Yeah, so it's called Labyrinth, based on the book by Kate Moss, so I start that at the Oh, end. right, as opposed to the old Jim Henson... Yeah, no, we Bowie. would never want to remake that. But you'd love to work with Muppets, though, wouldn't you? Oh, my God. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we'll see what we can do. Owen, you, of course, we've talked about modelling, and then we've talked about acting, and I know that you've an interest behind the camera, so mm. are, is that where you'd like to go, is it, or what's, what's um, next for you? <clears> I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I was cinematographer in a film called Charlie Casanova, which is coming out, it's going to be released in January and February which actually won Best Debut Feature alongside Parks. Congratulations. Yeah, which is quite fun. You won, did you win joint? Uh, we won joint Best yeah, Debut best Feature. feature. Yeah, congratulations. So we we kind of had a, that was a bit of fun. So are you, are you in it as well? No, as I was actually the cinematographer on it. Well, congratulations. Um, so that was, that was fun. So I, I just enjoy doing the whole thing. So I haven't decided if I'm going to go and direct another film yet. If someone gives me money, I'll go and direct a film tomorrow. Well, but here's yeah. hoping. Well, you can help with that. I'll do my best. <laughs> <Thank> uh, <laughs> it's been great. You're flying the flag for Ireland uh, in Merlin, and we're very proud of you, and thanks for coming to see us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, Colin, Katie and Owen. We have a short break to take, but join us in a few moments.